Hello, my name is Patrick Harrison and my lab in Cork works on gene editing for cystic fibrosis. CF was discovered in 1938 by Dorothy Anderson and for the past 70 years the focus has been to treat the symptoms of CF resulting in a shift from a fatal disease of childhood to a manageable but challenging disease in adults. In 1989 the CFTR gene was identified and the normal function of the protein revealed as a chloride channel expressed on the surface of secretory epithelial cells throughout the body. Here's a tiny portion of the CFTR gene centred around the five amino acids corresponding to the middle of the protein. Here's the same region of the gene with, from a person with cystic fibrosis. Just three base pairs missing and that protein no longer functions properly. The first approach to treat this disease was with cDNA addition. By adding cDNA we restore chloride channel function. But when translated into patients, the best result from a clinical trial is a mild stabilisation in lung function over a 12 month period. The second approach has been to use small molecules which can cause the protein to regain function and secrete chloride to approximately 60% of the normal level. As shown, it works for a lot of different CF mutations, but still about one person in every five with CF has a mutation combination which makes a protein which cannot be treated. Still, 60% function translates to a big improvement in lung function. But could gene editing do even better? Ten years ago, my lab published this study, a proof of concept of gene editing for this mutation. And in a moment, I'll describe some of our recent work and future plans. But first, let's discuss the challenge of delivering editing to, with CF. These are the affected organs throughout the body, though the clinical priority is to correct the lungs. There are lots of different cell types to target and two potential delivery routes via the airways or via, via the blood with systemic delivery. In animal models, viral delivery vectors have been used to target the lung cells, as shown in green here, and editing shown in red. You can see the overall effectiveness in both small and large airways. Non-viral methods have also been developed for systemic delivery to reach different organs in a selective fashion. And the first clinical trial of CRISPR gene editing has already been successfully completed using a similar approach. So what op options do we have for cystic fibrosis? My lab started on a homology directed repair approach and we've also tried targeted excision strategies but to date this is best suited to individual mutations. We've also had success with a super exon strategy to correct small clusters of mutations but efficiency needs to be improved. And more recently, we've had great success with base editing, but like many groups, bystander edits and limited sequence options are restrictive. Which brings us to our current strategy of Prime and HDRXL. Two strategies to correct all the different mutations in a single exon with a single set of reagents. Let me briefly explain Prime Excel. This table shows all the mutations in exon 12 of the CF gene. 6% of these mutations lie within just 34 base pairs of this exon and this accounts for fully one third of all the mutations which cannot be treated with the current drugs. Here's our target. Can we correct all these mutations in this region with just one editing reagent? CRISPR Prime XL uses a Cas9 nickase and a guide RNA to nick one strand of the DNA and liberate a 3' DNA flap. The prime edit guide RNA contains an extension which can bind this flap. It comprises the primer binding site and a sequence to correct all the mutations in this region known as the edit site. The RNA and DNA hybridize and the edit sequence serves as a template to correct the mutations. First G542X, then G551D and finally in this example R553X. Then cellular pathways complete the DNA edit. The mutation containing strand is excised and replaced by the edit sequence. The mismatch repair system completes the process and that's the end of the successful editing. There's a lot more work to do on this and I look forward to presenting our full data at a future summit. I'd just like to acknowledge the two SFI funded postdocs, Kader and Emma working on this project and the many past and current members of our lab. Also many collaborators, other funders and people who've provided reagents. Thank you very much.